last time we started discussing about the need for a graphical tool to specify the requirements. Uh, the graphical tool is like a drawing in a, in, a, in a civil engineering when you want to discuss the plan of a house with the person who has given you the job of uh, constructing a house. So, it should be something which everybody should be able to understand and uh, something similar to that as a graphical tool is what is known as a document flow diagram. And um, there is uh, there are two types of diagrams which are used in the specification of the uh, systems uh, requirements which are both uh, shown to the person who has asked for the system. One is uh, called a physical document flow diagram and the other is called a logical data flow diagram. The physical document flow diagram essentially explains how, what are the documents in the system, uh, where, how do they flow, where, where do they flow and um, what really happens at uh, each of the stages in various offices in the organization. Whereas, uh, in a logical data flow diagram, we go into great, great details about the structure of the data, the types of processing you want to do, the type of files you want to store and uh, how the data is retrieved from files and um, processed. So, it is more at the level which, of, which is of interest to the programmer, whereas the document flow diagram is of a greater interest to the manager who has given the requirements to you. So, that is, so both aspects are important, but the, uh, the aspect which is understandable by a non-computer specialist is really the document flow diagram. So, the parts of a document flow diagram are uh, called entities, may, meaning various offices or various places where documents actually flow and some, some places document also get generated as a result of the flow of some input documents. So, this is essentially what uh, the document flow diagram depicts. Now, the, the graphical structure we use certain symbols and um, as I said this the components of a document flow diagram are uh, called entities and data flows. There are two are the important two important things are there. One are entities and the other is data flows. And entities are represented by rectangles and uh, data which are really written, written on documents is shown by lines or document flows and uh, they are arcs connecting these uh, rectangles which are the entities. And of course, there is an arrow is used to depict direction in which the document flows. Apart from the document itself which flows from office to office, physical goods also flow, physical items also flow. The physical items flow is normally also shown as lines connecting these entities, but those lines we use dotted lines rather than full lines. So, that is the extremely simple symbols we use to represent the document flow diagram. Dashed lines are used to flow the show the physical items flow uh, and of course, repeat the document flow diagram depicts various entities and documents generated and are, and are transmitted between various offices. Let us take an example. Uh, we had a um, last time looked at the case 
where a company receives a number of goods and those goods are received by receiving of are sent by vendor and is received by receiving office. And um, now the two entities we begin with are one is vendor from whom the items come to the company. There can be more than one vendor that does not really matter because I we do not normally show one rectangle for each vendor. It is only a generic term showing any, any vendor, okay. any vendor when any, any vendor sends items to a, a company, the company receives those items in what is known as receiving office because normally these items as you know have to come by either trucks or uh, by some other means tempos or what, what not. Uh, they may have come to the railway station by trains or goods trains or whatever. But whatever it is, the goods are physical goods which had to be moved physically. So, physical movement of goods is shown by that dotted line which is, uh, which is here. The physical, these are the goods received. Okay. And the along with the goods, the vendor also sends a delivery note to indicate the fact that certain goods have been sent and what goods have been sent had to be specified in the delivery note because ultimately the company will make payments and so on based on the documents which are received from the vendor. Normally, the delivery note which comes should correspond to all the items which come on the vendor. Okay. And um, there may be discrepancy. In other words, there could be where the receiving office actually receives the delivery note and they also receive the, uh, the um, uh, physical items. There could be some discrepancy there. There is also another kind of discrepancy can be there. The, there is a certain order which there is the company has placed and uh, the delivery is against that order. Okay. And uh, suppose the delivery note is uh, not as per the order, then there is what is known as discrepancy. Now, of course, one may in, the, in this internet age, the actual notes may have delivery notes and so on may have come by electronically. Okay. Electronically, the, you know, the order may have been placed electronically by sending out a, a request uh, using the internet. And uh, he may have accepted the order and sent as a delivery notification saying that the items will be delivered on such and such a date and uh, giving all the, all the details. But it also has got to be a written document which has to come along with the delivered goods which is actually carried by the truck driver or whoever brings the items into your store. So, you cannot completely eliminate paper. It is paper, we talk about paperless office and so on, but the paper is essential because the paper essentially tells what goods come. It is called delivery chalan, which uh, uh, the reason why there is got to be a delivery chalan is that that is what is supposed to indicate the physically delivered notes, the goods. And, uh, so, that should not have any disturbances with the uh, even electronic delivery note which have been sent by the organization. So, we are not at this time concerned about what, uh, how exactly all these things really happen, we, but what really happens. In other words, there is a delivery note which comes and receiving office receives it and uh, they will compare the delivery against the order and if they do not be two do not match then there is some there is called a discrepancy. A discrepancy 
or this different difference between the what is ordered and what is actually physically delivered that is um, sent to the purchase office. So, the purchase office is the office which is already have sent the uh, send the request for purchase and um, this comparison will be done only on the basis of the notes in other words on the on the documents it is not done anything and nothing is done physically at this time because receiving office will receive so many items so many trucks may be waiting in a queue to deliver items but it is a large company like a uh, uh, car manufacturing company many vendors may be have sent many different types of items and if you start uh, actually comparing the delivered items against the notes and so on at the receiving station there will be a long queue formed there will be a huge delay and of course as you know truck drivers may be very impatient to go back so you cannot make them wait too long so what you really do at this stage is only take the delivery chalan, enter it maybe on the computer, if the receiving office will have a PC in front of the receiving clerk and the receiving clerk will just enter the uh, whatever is in the delivery note. Hopefully of course, some, some nowadays people use some kind of bar chart or things of that type, so that you do not have to physically enter everything, you may just scan the bar chart to get the items that are delivered as per the note and that will be compared with the uh, purchase order and that is electronic comparison by the computer. Of course, as soon as you take the delivery note uh, and sign, it, sign him off, you are let him go okay. and uh, then the next step is you have to do a physical checking of the items and the physical checking has to take place in something called an inspection office. See, most companies will have a separate place where the of course, some someone nowadays people use some kind of bar chart or things of that type, so that you do not have to physically enter everything, you may just scan the bar chart to get the items that are delivered as per the note and that will be compared with the uh, purchase order and that is electronic comparison by the computer. Of course, as soon as you take the delivery note uh, and sign, it, sign him off you are let him go okay. and uh, then the next step is you have to do a physical checking of the items and the physical checking has to take place in something called an inspection office. See most companies will have a separate place where the actual physical inspection takes place. Uh, what, what, is, what is meant by physical inspection is the note may say certain thing and but the, the actual delivery may be a mistaken or incorrect delivery. The physical items may be different from what the document says because hopefully it does not happen, but sometimes it does happen. So, there could be a number of types of discrepancies uh, which the uh, inspection office will find out. One is that the quantity which may be which are there in the uh, note may not be physically there. You may have said I sent 100 items, but if you count, you may find only 98, two missing okay. or it could be even excess sometimes, that is one, one aspect. So, there the other kind of discrepancy can be that the um, which can be found at the receiving of the itself is that there is a certain deadline for delivery. He may have delivered very late or he may have delivered early. In either case, you may decide whether to, if it is delivered too early, you may decide whether to accept it or not. And if it is delivered too late, you may also de decide whether to accept it or not. So, this is acceptance or rejection at the time of delivery is the job of the purchase office. So, uh, because electronically the, uh, the data flows from the receiving office to the purchase office and on comparison of documents they can find this out even at the receiving office uh, the, uh, the decision may be to send back the truck if it is either too late or too early. So, at this stage do not even come to inspection. So, there could, could be different, type, different types of uh, 
procedures which may be there in the procedure manual, um, but by and large the uh, this diagram they will tell the management what really is going to be happening. Okay. And um, the discrepancy note is the one which uh, is generated by by comparing the level note against the order and this goes to purchase office for them to take whatever appropriate decisions are there and physically delivered items go to the inspection office and along with the items received note that is the item received note again as I said receiving office will not really do any physical checking. So, they take it on faith that whatever has been uh, delivered is uh, as per the document. So, the essentially they forward the uh, delivery note convert it into say items received note you might say and send it off to the inspection office. So, that they can check against the delivered items physically delivered items okay. and th that is the purpose of this document for diagram. In other words, there are entities which have to which generate documents and these documents flow from entity to entity and um, in certain entities there are certain decisions taken based on the decisions some action is uh, also taken. So, but those details of exactly what uh, uh, what what rules or business rules as they call what business rules you have to follow what I mean by business rule to give a simple example in case uh, you receive item very late do you accept it or do not accept it the business rule may be that if it is late beyond 5 days I do not accept it okay, or if it is early earlier than 5 days then I do not accept it. There is a business rule which the company may decide. The other business rule may be that excess what happens if there is a an excess delivery. Uh, some companies business rule may be that up to 5 percent excess or 5 percent deficiency I condone. So, these are business rules which has got to be decided by the management of the company. As far as systems analyst is concerned his only job is to implement the business rules, but the business rules themselves are to be given by the management. But the, the, the main advantage or the reason why we have this document flow diagram is to give a graphical idea of what is going to be happening in the company. It has two purposes. The, um, the purposes uh, are uh, of course, I think uh, this, this uh, transparency again explains uh, the interpretation of the data flow diagram. Uh, as I said vendors deliver items to receiving office accompanied by delivery note, receiving office sends item to inspection office along with the items received note and uh, received receiving office sends discrepancy note to purchase office and also per, uh, there is a later on we will see the inspection office may also send a discrepancy note to the purchase office after the physical inspection takes place. In this case the entities are vendors receiving office and inspection office and uh, purchase office and documents delivery note, item received note and discrepancy note. So, these are the uh, um, these are primarily the Now, before we get to the data flow diagram, um, the, the point which I am trying to emphasize is that the, the document flow diagram is a as I said a graphical depiction of what happens. So, the reason why we do this is this also shows whether the analyst has understood the requirements of the user. Is this really what happens in the company? Have I understood what are the entities, what are the document flows, and what uh, uh, what 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 really happens to these documents, and so on? 
because whatever is noted down at the time of interview or fact gathering is normally in, the, in, in terms of a lot of notes and so on. Those notes that we converted to something more precise and concise. This can also be understood by both the uh, analyst and by the uh, uh, management which has given the requirements. So, even though I have looked at a very, very small, I would say almost trivial example, the principles remain the same. The only thing is, in a real system, there will be lot more entities and lot more data flows, but because of the fact that we cannot look at the whole thing without confusing ourselves, we really have to kind of even in a real case, we have to break up the problem to smaller parts and look at each part and draw a picture for each part and those parts are interconnected. Normally, they will be interconnected through in the case of DFD, this uh, document, document flows. So, effectively, you might say that the document flow diagram says what happens in the organization in terms of flow of goods and flow of documents. The next step is to look at what is known as a data flow diagram. Um, data flow diagram is at more, a, more at a logical stage, logical part. What I mean by logical part is uh, it talks more about the how things happen. Say in the case of document flow diagram, essentially it is saying what is going to be happening, what, what happens, a certain document flows and then it is compared and so on. And how exactly does the comparison take place, how are business rules implemented? Those aspects are the ones which are detailed in a data flow diagram. So, data flow diagram, I would say, is uh, more interesting or important to the programmer who is going to take this and program it. But then, it is also of interest to the management because you could tell the management in terms of what, how you implemented the business rules. This again is a graphical picture and the graphical picture must be such as to be simple enough for a non-computer or non-technical person, non, not, not, not a person who is really a programmer or a computer man, but a general manager to be able to understand. That in other words, it should be of a type which anybody with a reasonable amount of intelligence can understand and give you a feedback about whether, uh, whether, you, what, whether you have understood correctly what uh, he said or not. So, there has been a lot of work going on in terms of so called business models, because uh, business models uh, to some extent, DFD models certain business, how the business is take, takes place and so on. But there are more complicated models also and a um, lot of pro problems normally arise in uh, business modeling in the sense that the uh, analyst is not a specialist in that business. And, um, so, nowadays what companies do for instance is because they work with many different businesses like insurance, banking, hospitals and so on, there are some specialists. Some cases they even employ a person who has been a manager in a bank as a business expert to work along with the analyst. So, that the SRA stage that person who has a knowledge about banking 
is able to kind of correct your uh, ideas and later on when you go to the, the customer, you go with a certain better understanding of the business. So, many, many companies also have specialists, you might say there is a person with, uh, with what, they, what they call the domain knowledge, domain in this case being banking, the banking domain knowledge or uh, insurance domain knowledge or whatever hospital domain knowledge. What is meant by this is that they, they know by experience, by having worked there for some time, what really happens in those organizations and they also will understand the jargon terms and things like that. So, if you are doing a lot of business with bankers and so on, it, it is worthwhile to have a, 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 a banking expert or maybe even more than one to work with you. So, big companies which do a lot of services, service prog the programming of services like our more, as I said most companies in India do like TCS or Infosys or Wipro, many of them are really working with this banks, insurance companies and so on, they do employ domain experts. But the analyst over time, they will to some extent, if you have been doing a lot of work with banks, he will also become a domain expert in, a, in some sense. And uh, of course, an analyst will not like all his life to be spent in just doing banking projects. Uh, to broaden one's outlook, uh, he may like to be deferred to other things also, but it sets up to up to the management in terms of, of course, when they get the breadth, it is uh, the person has got uh, slightly better, you might say marketability, his own knowledge improves, uh, so that is a, a different issue. DFD also has got entities and data flows. Besides that, DFD specifies processing performed by some of the entities. That is, in other words, we talked about the uh, receiving office. What does the receiving office do in terms of the process or implementing the business rule? Some ent what, what entities generate new documents? That is also given in the DFD. Um, again, the documents, in the case of data document flow diagram, we essentially give only the document name without giving great details about what, what is contained in the document. Here, it has a complete data structure, you might say, the set of data which pa become part of the document and processing. Uh, data stores where the um, some of the received, for instance, if you have what I mean by data store is a disk drive or some file storage where which is a repository of uh, uh, data which are required to be referred to when you do a processing. Example, if you have, if a company has sent a lot of orders to number of vendors, the set of orders which have been sent to vendors will be stored in a file, which is called the order file. And when items are received, you will compare the received or delivery note received from the vendor with the order which you can retrieve from the file. So, that the two, two can be electronically compared, that is the computer can compare the two to find out there is a discrepancy and so on. Okay. So, that is what is meant by a repository or a file. Because most files as you know, you can also read from the file and write into the file. Depends on situation, you may have situations where you could make a file read only and you cannot write anything into it and change it. Like for instance, if it is an order file, file of orders, you can only read it because if you tamper with it and change it, the entire thing is gone. You, if you try to, you know, you could have made a, you could kind of incorrectly write something into it. So, order file 
once an order is sent, it is put in a file and there is a read only file. Okay. And so this is the kind of thing uh, and write may be where you uh, really if you are creating something like a uh, uh, bill, then the creation the bills which are created would uh, be a you will write it in the bill, the bill, bill part. Okay. So this, uh, this could be uh, this could be a write writing type. So it could read, write or read and write both. So that also has to be depicted in the data flow diagram. Is it a read only file or is it a read write file? These are things which have to be also shown. Now this is an example of a data flow diagram corresponding to the document flow diagram which you already had drawn. Again in this case the square here the vendor is an entity okay the entity sends a delivery note and there is a receiving say having a receiving office which is specified in the previous case a receiving process the process does something and it, it actually refers to orders and compares the orders with the delivery note and um, of course for the inspection office it sends directly the items received note whereas after comparing the delivery note against the orders if there is discrepancy the discrepancy note at the document stage is sent to the purchase office discrepancy at the inspection inspection office would be also sent to purchase which I have not shown in this case because I have not shown the process which happens in the inspection office and the process which happens in the purchase office. I only am showing as entities. Entities are squares and, and processes are circles and the other notation which is used in two parallel lines are used to depict a, a file and uh, if an arrow shows upwards that means I am only reading from this. If I write then the process from process to the orders there will be an arrow showing below. Okay. So these are the two um, kind of the, these are the simple um, notations they are used. The Actually, the, um, this is a very, very simple uh, data flow diagram which I have shown here to just illustrate the idea of what a data flow diagram is, is like. Later on in one more module, we will discuss at length the uh, drawing of data flow diagrams there are certain number of rules which apply to the uh, correctness of data flow diagrams. When is it correct, when is it incorrect and so on because the correctness of a data flow diagram is important from the point of view of the programmer who is going to implement it on the machine. Any incorrect data flow diagram cannot be implemented. Okay. So those aspects are what I would say detailed aspects which are of greater concern to the programmer than to the user. The user gets a overview and so that is the reason why I have not really uh, uh, talked too much about I mean given such a huge detail, I give only a very small sample of a DFD because this is the kind of thing which goes into a, an SRS. So to review, entities are originators of data and consumers of data. Okay, like uh, you know, we, the vendor is an originator of data, and the consumer is the purchase office. Vendor inspection office and purchase office are entities in the above diagram. The diagram which which I showed. Day of flow delivery note, items received note, and discrepancy note. Circle is used to depict a process. Pair of parallel lines is used to depict a store.
Now, uh, I think it is again I am showing the same picture to kind of reiterate what uh, what I talked talk, talk last time. Okay. So, um, data in a store may be read, read by a process which I said. Process data may also be written into the store. Circles depicting process are detailed separately using structured English algorithms or, or decision tables. That is, as I said, circles represent the pro depict the process. What, what, uh, how, what kind of um, business rules? How the business rules are implemented? The implementation of the business rules has got to be detailed, and the detail is normally done in what is known as structured English is nothing but a more precise statement of the business rules as almost like a but not quite a programming language. What I mean by almost like a but not quite a programming language or if you know that a programming language has a lot of restrictions in terms of self syntax a comma here, a semicolon there and so on and has a certain set of semantic rules which you have to follow because the program is something which has got to be understood by a computer, something to be understood by an inanimate object or a computer whereas structured English is somewhat like a program in the sense that it has similar structures like uh, repeating a set of things again and again or comparing or if then else rules and so on. But there is no syntax which is very strict because it is intended to be understood by a human being and human being will excuse lack of commas and semicolons and so on because primarily it is for his for understanding. So, the structured English is somewhat equivalent to the uh, uh, to a you might say uh, a simple procedural language statement like uh, of, uh, like say C, C procedures. Decision tables is another tool which is also used to a very complex decision set of rules. There is complex set of business rules which have got to be implemented. Then it turns out that the structured English description has too many nested if then else type of statements. You, you really remember that if you have a program in C, there are a lot of nested if then else that is very difficult to kind of interpret it because one will lead to another and so on there is you could make a logical error. Whereas, the decision table is a stable structure which very clearly shows the very complex decisions to be taken the rules business rules. Now, so it has got a another advantage that uh, it is easily understood by non programming person. If you, have, if you show a structured English program or I would say a structured English algorithm not a program, that is a the distinction I want to make between an algorithm and a program is program is a syntax but the algorithm is not really a syntax see there is a it only tells uh, the procedure. Now, the if you have an algorithm which has got too many nestings, it is difficult for a, a non computer person to follow that and understand what business rule you have implemented. For that person, it is simpler to understand a simple table because each rule is in that in the case of a decision table represented by one column in the table. 
So you can go column by column and see it. From the point of view of the analyst, decision table structure has also got an advantage of checking the completeness and correctness, logical correctness and completeness of the business rules. Very often business rules are given which are not complete in the sense that they missed out certain issues or certain points or they could be contradictory. Two rules may say, uh, say seem to say the same thing, but they contradict one another. So, contradictions and completeness and redundancy, you may end, what is meant by redundancy is this, more than one business rule says the same thing and uh, you got to, instead of having two rules you can do away one rule. <coughs> These are the advantages of using a decision table, again which represents a pro processing set of rules. I'll, I will again discuss both structured English algorithms and decision tables in later modules in much greater detail because they are tools of uh, very great importance to an analyst. Data flows are expanded to detail as I, as I said, as I said data structure or set of items, what, what is there in the data flow and uh, contents of the data stores are also detailed in a, in a data flow diagram. In other words, the diagram itself only gives a overall picture, but what each one of them contains is written up in a separate document primarily to understand and also to check with the uh, user whether your understanding of what is contained with the real note is correct or not, okay. Like for instance, drill note, sometimes what happens is uh, drill note as you think it ought to be may not be the one which the company may already have, but it may turn out that what the company already has is not suitable for uh, correct processing of the data. So, having this drill note is important from the point the detailing this is important from the point of view also programming later on and making sure that the implementation of the system does not get into difficulties because of a lack of data. In other words, the data items in these data flows should be both ideally all the necessary data should be there and they should be sufficient, necessary and sufficient. Excess data may be there, but you know the excess data unnecessarily being carried could uh, you know it is a waste. So, one would like to have only what is necessary and what is means what I mean by sufficient is it has got to be enough data to be able to do the job. So, it is necessary and sufficiency of the data items have got to be made sure. Now, for delivery note, normally it is a little, it is not all that simple to, uh, to uh, make sure about the necessary and sufficient data. Uh, to some extent, we use common sense and it, it will come out later on when you are trying to kind of make up the uh, uh, structured English algorithm, you may suddenly find that some data which is required in the algorithm is missing in the input documents. So, it may even come up later on in the thing when you are in the analysis, but preliminary you can find out what uh, items are there in the uh, current existing system. If it is a first year like as I said, there are two, two types of situations where one situation is where uh, you um, try to improve the current situation, current current structure, current system. 
the current system you are improving, so you may add certain data and delete certain data and so on. Or you may be add an issue during the entire system, like it may be a new hospital which has no, hist no existing uh, data flows and so on. In that case, you have better clean slate to work with. But you are not, not everybody is so lucky. When very often what happens is you actually work with existing uh, systems uh, or existing companies. So, you got to kind of try to tailor and make some modifications and so on. And sometimes if it is too much modification, it may not be feasible. That is something we have to uh, be concerned about. But anyhow, then you know will have the order number. Why should we, why do we require an order number? Because the uh, delivery is against an order. So, you have to compare the key of an order is order number, which is a unique number. So, you have to compare the order which is placed with the delivery against that order. So, these, these, these do not match, that means you, there is some problem. There is in other words, suppose you go uh, vendor order number comes and you go through all the file and if I find that the order number is not there anywhere in your ordered file, then that means it is a either that he has made a mistake in uh, entering the order number or that he is just uh, uh, sending you the incorrect one which is meant for some other company. Okay. In any case, order number is very important. If they do not match, you have to right away reject. The selling office reject saying that I do not know what this order, I am not place an order. So, order number is important. And the vendor code is essentially important for the vendor from the point of view of the fact that the, when the company should know which vendor has supplied it because same item may be asked by from many vendors, three or four vendors may be supplying the same item. So, you have to say which, which vendor has supplied it. So, the vendor code is something which has got to be unique and that vendor code is assigned by the ordering entity. That is the co company which is ordering has to specify a uh, vendor code and when that vendor code has got to be followed by the vendor when he sends his items. He cannot say I got my own code, but then this uh, the, the order uh, the, the vendor code, of course, there is a, at the time of the ordering itself, you kind of make sure that there is an agreement between the uh, your, your vendor code and his vendor code. So, it is kind of a mutual agreement in terms of vendor code. Of course, vendor name and address, which is, which is required uh, for sending out later on maybe the, uh, the payment for the vendor. The vendor uh, address may be another is even the uh, email address or whatever, okay. But normally physical addresses are there. If you want to receive, send back the goods after inspection, then you may have to send it back to that particular physical address. So, the item name, an item name is not unique. So, you need an item code. A code is a key, which is a unique, unique identification of the item. And date the item is delivered, the quantity is applied, and units. What I mean by units is is it kilograms, is it liters? So, units is important depending upon the particular item, or it could be just numbers, dozen, so many dozen, okay, or so many hundreds. Okay. So, units is a, is a something has to be specified. Items received note has a uh, order number again, item name, item code and um, delivery date, date of delivery, okay, that is again important and quantity is applied, okay and the uh, uh, units. Actually, I should really say uh, the items received note will uh, you know, delivery note gives a certain items he is said, said to have uh, supplied and uh, 
the receive the uh, item received may not be at quantity supplied. Okay, what I mean by that is uh, <coughs> the document called really not may have a certain number of quantity supplied as a as he has specified quantity supplied. But of course, at receiving office, you uh, do not know whether the quantity supplied is actually quantity received <coughs> because, as I said, at the receiving office, one does not know whether the uh, items have come or not. So, you have to assume that the quantity received is equal to the quantity supplied. That is why it is, is the again quantity supplied. One might because the reason why I emphasize this is that it is after all received. So, this should really say quantity received, but then at the receiving office you take for granted this because we are not doing a physical checking that takes place only in the inspection office. So, you assume that this is a, but then what you do is you check this against the order. Let us look at the um, so the point is discrepancy. Discrepancy not. Again, when are, when can the discrepancy take place? If the orders do not match, order number in the uh, uh, order number of the what is received and the order number in your in your file <coughs> they do not match that is a discrepancy. Vendor code also there could be a discrepancy they do not do not match say item name item code you check all this discrepancy if there is any discrepancy uh, there is you actually are making assumption because if uh, the important thing like order number and vendor number, vendor code do not match, then right away you are not even comparing it with your order. Whereas, in other words, you are returning the item right from the receiving station, receiving office. And so, the, the excess deficiency in this case is not the physical excess or efficiency, it is a logical excess or efficiency. What I mean by that is he claimed to have uh, sent some items and uh, the order was for certain number of items. So, the, 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 the excess efficiency is between the documents as you compare the uh, delivery note what is, what is mentioned there with the order file these two do not match then there is a discrepancy. So, that is the that is the excess deficiency here. Number of days late or early that also can be found out from the two documents matching. So, receiving office order file is the one against which the uh, delivery is uh, checked. This will have order number, order date, item name, item code, vendor code, vendor name and address, quantity ordered and then you period that is when was it ordered the date of the order and the uh, delivery period which is given to him. From the order date and delivery period you can find out whether it is late or early okay that is the discrepancy okay. and uh, we receive an order file we got all this data. So, the in English I can I can uh, write a simple set of statements say you compare order number and delivery note with that in the order file if no match return item to vendor. If order number matches then compare item codes if no match return item to vendor. If order number matches compare quantity delivered quantity ordered if excess is deficient send discrepancy note to purchase office for them to take a decision. That accept or reject. If order number matches, uh, compare date of delivery with expected date, 
if late or early, send the script and say not to touch his office for them to make a decision that reject or accept. In case in 3 and 4, send items received no to inspection office also. That is, there, there is a what I mean by that is um, case 3 is phone number matches, everything is matched. Uh, but there is a discrepancy, even then it does not matter. So, you just and um, because inspect the if the purchase office decides to accept it, even if it is late or early based on their business rules, then you send it to the inspection office. This is again what what is meant by the processing rules. Now, we have always been emphasizing the need for operational, tactical, and strategic information. In this case, this the operational is the simplest part. Automatic checking of delivery against order <coughs> and creating a discrepancy not, not discrepancy any in the order. It is a purely clerical process. The clerical process is done by the clerk who enters the item and the computer which compares the files against what is delivered and so on. So, this is straightforward operation. There is a, no intelligence really required in the sense that no decision take making is being done. The strategic, the tactical. So, you the tactical maybe is the one which you use a middle management. In this case, you may, as I said, an item may be ordered from more than one vendor, multiple vendors. So, you may decide as a tactical decision as a company, evolving a vendor performance index based on the discrepancy in supplied quantity and later on an inspection also. In other words, if a vendor consistently is late or consistently supplies less or more items, then you may decide to downgrade him and create some kind of a performance index. If somebody is doing extremely well adhering to a, a, a requirements, then you give them a higher grade. And the strategic part is use the performance index to decide proportion of an item to be given to different vendors. If a vendor's performance is A, you may decide that last next time around when you make a proportion of your order, you give 70 percent to him. And if somebody is C, we may give it only give 10 percent to him. Because one, one might say, why give 10 percent at all to C? You may also decide that if he is consistently bad and his quality is also bad, you can blacklist him and do not uh, don't order anything in further from that person. So, the point is the vendor performance index is a something which is a derived data from the operational data. And and based on this derived data and what that derived data, the formula to be used is decided by the middle manager. And what to do with this, with this index is done by top management who may have other cons considerations to decide how to, how to kind of uh, uh, split the order. He may, he may know that Maybe even though even the vendor performance is extremely good, there is an impending strike in this company. So, he may decide to give a different proportion. So, the point I am trying to make is that even from this very, very preliminary stage, you have to keep at the back of your mind the need for tactical and strategic information to be derived from the operational information. And so, the data flow diagram document flow diagram form part of the systems requirement specifications along with of course, the structured regulation stuff like that. Okay. And these are all things which I will discuss in a greater detail uh, later. Uh, maybe I will review a little bit of this in the next talk and then go on to the next module.